The latest version of Android TV on the Chromecast devices has unfortunately broken how ADB works. Because of this change, any application that was using ADB, like Launcher Manager, like the TDUK applications, like uh, Mouse Toggle, all those applications now unfortunately are no longer working. But on my device running Android TV 14, as you can see here, I can press the home button. I can open up the TDUK app killer. I can click on connect. Would you believe it? It's working once again. So what's the fix? Well, there's actually two separate fixes for this. The main issue with this Android 14 update on Chromecast is they have now changed how ADB works. Before ADB was a service, you activate the service and that service listens on port 5555. Any application that wants to use ADB, as long as they connect on port 5555, it works absolutely fine. But with Android TV 14 on Chromecast, they've changed this mechanism so that port number is actually randomized. So let me just quickly show you the two fixes. So we've got a free option and we've got a paid option. So the free one obviously has the benefit that it doesn't cost anything. But then on the negative side, you will have to find another device. You'll have to issue some commands. And also once the commands have gone in, that will then restore the port back to 5555. And from that point forward, all of the applications will work once again until you reboot your Chromecast. When you reboot the Chromecast, unfortunately, the port will be reset again and you'll have to follow this process on every reboot. Now, on the other side, we've got this application called TV Quick Actions Pro, just a phenomenal application, has so many features. Now, the benefit of this application is it's very easy to implement. You install it from the App Store, select a few options and your ADB port will be restored. And the great thing is, even when you reboot your device, that ADB port will always stay as 5555. So... It really just fixes all of the problems that Google have created with this update. But on the negative, the application does cost $4. Personally, I do think the $4 price tag is well worth it because the amount of features that it enables, even just things like having the recents menu, you know, on the NVIDIA Shield, you can double tap the home key and you can then see the recent applications running in the background. That feature is only by default available on the NVIDIA Shield. Whereas when you install this application on any device, you can bring that feature to your Android TV device as well. So that's just one of the many features that it has. And it's a lifetime license for unlimited devices. So you buy it once and you can install it on as many devices as you like, but not everybody wants to spend money. And this is why I've given you the free option, which I will also demonstrate after I've shown how this option works. So let me jump over to my Chromecast. So I've already installed TV Quick Actions Pro from the Play Store on my device. And I've set mine to work with the back button. So if I long press that, we can see I now get this floating panel. I can press right on the D-pad to get a virtual mouse. And now I have a fully working virtual mouse, which works fine on Android TV 14. Let's go back. If I press the down button, I can now use the recents menu so I can see these applications running in the background. And with one click, I can close all of them. And just one last demonstration. If I press the left button on the D-pad, we can see that brings up my dock and I can now quickly access all of my favorite applications. So super easy to use, super easy to set up, and just gives you a wealth of options and customizations you can do on your Android TV or Google TV devices. But what we're interested in today is how can I restore my ADB port back to 5555? Okay, so I've reverted all of the changes on my device. I've also restarted it, which means now when I try to open up one of these applications, because ADB port should be restored back to a random number, you'll see these applications will now fail. So open that up, click on connect, and we get that error. So let's now fix it. So let's open up the app store and let's just search for TV quick actions. Here we are. Let's get the first one. I've already purchased this application so I can just reinstall it again. Let's open that up. Let me take you through the configuration of this application. So as I mentioned before, just too many amazing features with this application. Let's click on continue. Let's click on continue. He does have a telegram group where he does offer really great support people uh, make suggestions, updates, bug fixes. It really is a great community. Let's click on continue. Okay, so let's now grant the permissions that this application needs. So first one is overlay. Let's click on allow. I can now go and find the application in the list here. Here we are, let's click on allowed. That's done, let's press back on the remote. Next permission needed is the usage access. Let's click on grant, scroll down, and where you see where it says special app access, let's click on that. Go to usage access. Let's click on that. Let's find TV Quick Actions Pro in the list. And let's turn that on as well. Here we are. That's now enabled. Let's go back. 
back again. Back one more time. Okay, that permission is now granted. Let's click on continue. This thing I just ignored, so I'm just going to click on not now. But you can also choose to turn that off. Let's close that down or click on not now. Okay, so start the accessibility service. So this is a key permission that you do have to grant. So let's click on agree. Let's scroll down. And where it says accessibility, let's click on that. And scroll down and find the TV quick actions in the list. And we can also turn that on. Here we are. Enable. Click on OK. Press back on the remote. Back again. Back one more time. And we're now inside the application and those permissions have now been granted. So I'm not going to go into the application because as I mentioned before, or as you can see here clearly, guys, there's a ton of features in here. Just everything from custom panels to custom triggers, different um, actions you can do, different buttons you can bind. It really just has a vast library of great things you can do with this application. But what we're interested in today is just how to restore the ADB port. So it goes back to the double five, double five. So to do that, let's go down into where it says settings. Go over to ADB. Let's click on that. Let's scroll down. OK, so there's a couple of things we're going to turn on in here. So starting with restore the ADB port, let's click on that. This will now take you to your developer options, which were already enabled for me. And we can see here by default, even though USB debugging is on, wireless debugging is disabled. So I need to turn that on. Let me click on that. Let's go to enabled. And now the last thing we need to do here is to display the pairing code. Once we see the pairing code on the screen, then the TV Quick Actions Pro application can take over. It will make a connection for you. And from that point forward, it can ensure that the port it listens on is not a random port. It's always set to double five, double five. So let's bring up the pairing code. I'm hoping now this should create the pairing for us, which you see a notification in the background. As you can see, this says wireless debugging has now been connected. So I can click on always allow and click on allow again. I can now press back on the remote. And if I scroll down, we can see it's actually created a paired device or a connection. So I can back out of this. Now, if for whatever reason you don't see that prompt telling you that it's done that pairing, just turn off both USB debugging and wireless debugging, turn them on again, go back to the application, and once again, click on restore ADB port, and hopefully you'll then see that pop up. I've seen it on my device now, so I can now press down on the remote. Let's now also select the option to restore the ADB port on boot. So even when you restore the device, this application will force the ADB port to go back to double five, double five. So I definitely want to turn that on. Now we can see that we need to give permissions to enable this feature. So the way we give the permissions, if I scroll back up, we'll see there's an option here which says fix permissions. Here we go. One click, click on here to grant. And we get the message that the permissions have now been granted. So that's great. I can now click on back. Let's now scroll down and once again, enable the option to restore the port on boot, which is this one here. Let's turn that on. That's now done. And the very last thing, guys, which I did actually discover during troubleshooting is you do have to turn on one of these other options just to make sure that every time the device restarts, it will correctly reset the port back to double five, double five. So the option I turned on was this one here. If I could just find it, use ADB speed up. Let's turn that on. That's fine, guys. So now the ADB port should be restored to double five, double five. Even when I reboot the device, it should also restart on double five, double five. So I can now press home. I've finished with this application now. Let's do the first test. Let's see now if I try the TDUK app killer. Let's click on that. And can we connect now first time and we're in and the last thing we can quickly do now is just to do a quick restart and confirm that even when your device reboots adb is always going to be locked in on double five double five so let me restart now and just while you're waiting guys if you haven't subscribed to the channel youtube is telling me that more than 75 percent of you are watching my content but you haven't actually subscribed so please do double check and make sure you are subscribed if you are looking for the best Android TV, Fi Stick, Fi TV, tips and tricks, the best streaming applications, really just how to get the most from your streaming devices. Please double check and make sure you are subscribed with all notifications. 
Thank you. I'm just going to go down into one of those applications. So three, two, one, do you connect first time? That works first time. So that's definitely the easiest way to fix this problem and restore the ADB port back to double five, double five after this Android TV 14 update on the Chromecast devices. Let's now undo all of my changes and let me show you the free option. So I'll remove the TV Quick Actions Pro from my device. So once again, ADB is broken on this device. Let's now fix it using a free method. Now the free method requires you to download the ADB platform tools, which you can get directly from the Google website. But I personally just prefer to download ADB Link, which is a graphical toolbox you can use for various things on your device, like pushing applications, like backing up the care application, like lots of great features it has built in. It's absolutely free and it has those ADB tools built in. And I will leave a link in the video description on how you can download that onto your device. So, so download that for your PC or for your Mac, depending on which device you have. Now, before we go to that, Let's go to the settings and let's just double check exactly what IP address our device is on. Go down into system, go to the developer options. Let's click on that. Make sure USB debugging is on and let's now turn on wireless debugging as well. Let's click on that. Let's click on enabled and we can see my IP address there ends in 194. Let's now click on pair device with pairing code. Let's do that now. And there is the IP address and port that I need to make a connection to. And there is the Wi-Fi pairing code. So if I now jump over to my Windows machine, so here we can see on my Windows machine, I've already installed ADB link in the default location. All I need to do now is just navigate to that folder in the command prompt, ADB link. I can then navigate to the ADB tools folder or ADB files folder. Let's type that in. And in here we'll have the ADB.exe, which is the tool we're going to use to make this connection. Now the command is basically ADB pair IP address port and then the pairing code. So let's do that now. Let's bring up the Chromecast window again and we can now type in the command ADB pair my IP address which is 192.168.0.194 colon the port number 32933 and then finally do a space and enter in the pairing code. So my code is 984114. Let's press enter and let's see if that works first time. Okay, so successfully paired. Okay, I think I did see the message there. So I can now just type in the command ADB TCP IP because we want to reset the port to 5555. Okay, so if you see no error messages, that means it's worked absolutely fine. So what that means now is we can close this session. There's a message at the back there. So the debugging is connected now. I can close down my Windows machine, don't need that anymore. I can now back out of this. If I scroll down and here we can just confirm that it is successfully connected and it has paired and it's reset that port back to 5555, which basically means now any application, anything that needs ADB, whether it's Launcher Manager, whether it's um, ADB TV. Let's try that one for a quick test. Let's click on Connect. Click on Allow. And we can see that this application is now, once again, working absolutely fine. Let's back out of this. Let's try the DNS switcher. One click. Click on Allow. That's now also working. So that's basically the free way or the free method that you can follow to restore your ADB port back to 5555 on your Chromecast devices running Android TV 14. It is a bit of a faff, which is why personally I would recommend just doing the paid option because it is just a one-off payment, but the application itself just gives you so many other benefits, so many other features that you can definitely take advantage of on your Android TV or Google TV devices. So that's pretty much this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. I do appreciate your patience. Sorry for the long video, but I really wanted to get this out there and present both options so you can decide whichever one works best for your particular use case. So really appreciate your support. Do like and share this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.